All right, halftime here at the Heinz Center between Iona and Buck. Now, we're in New York, so why not interview a native New Yorker? It's Justin Antwell with assistant coach Janine Radice, who's from New York, the Staten Island area. This is the first of a two-part interview. We'll interview her next weekend when we take on the Fordham Rams, your alma mater, where you're a Hall of Famer. Coach Radice, thanks so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. All right, uh, first off, how are you liking your time at Bucknell thus far? Uh, it's been a few months. It seems like you're pretty comfortable. Yeah, no, I know. I really enjoy working with the staff. I love the players. They're very receptive to learning, and, and that's half the battle. You did so well at Delaware, but after 20 years, sometimes you need a change. So how did you hear about Bucknell University? We're so glad to have you. Well, Bucknell had some had uh, two openings, and I reached out to uh, Coach Russell and uh, – you know, then we started talking, and, and I got an interview, and then the rest is history. Has it been of a bit of a learning curve and an adjustment period? Because you, you get so comfortable in one place, no matter what industry, whether you're in banking, finance, pharmacy, being a doctor, one place, it's got to be tough, right? Well, At yeah, first. it is, because it, it's a learning curve. I mean, I'm older now. I'm used to doing things for 21 years under the same head coach, and you get familiar with somebody. You know, you don't have to ask a lot of questions. You just do what you do. And so, um, you know, at Bucknell, they do things different, and uh, there's a lot of different ways to, to get to winning. So um, they just do some, you know, different things with scouting that, that we don't do. What do you like about Coach Russell? He's one of the young up-and-comers in this game. Yeah, no, I, I really like the way he handles the team and his relationship with the players is really good. And uh, he's really um, a player's coach, I think, and uh, you don't see that that often. What is your role as an assistant? Like, Give the fans who aren't too familiar with Bucknell women's basketball your exact role and what Coach Russell wants you doing. Well, I work with the guards. Obviously, I was a guard in college. I worked with the guards for all my years in, in, in college coaching. So um, I work with those, the small guards, the points and the twos, the combos. So we work on ball handling, shooting, watch some film with them a little bit, um, talk about time and situation and uh, different things like that. What kind of guard were you when you were a player? I was a combo guard. I, I started off at the two guard position just because I could score the ball pretty well. And then I moved over to the point because they needed someone to play that position. But I was I was a scoring point guard and there really aren't that many out there mentality wise. But Kai's a scoring point guard and uh, I can relate to that. Uh, the, the guards here at Bucknell call themselves G-Unit for, for uh, the guard play. I'm not sure if you knew that. Uh, speaking of Kai, she's having a tremendous junior year and you've got to take some credit for her growth and development. W- what, what are you seeing from Kai English? I think she's attacking, and I said to her in the beginning of the year when she had some rough games, I mean, she did it well in Ryer in the second half, but uh, the first half she was turning the ball over. I said, Kai, you know, you're looking to pass first. You have to look to score first, you know, and be aggressive on that end, and then the pass will come. And so I thought she started doing that better after we watched some film, um, and she's looking to score, and, and that's what she needs to do, and that's what the team needs her to do right now. Do you have a favorite drill you like to utilize in practice, Coach Radice? No, not really. I mean, I, I talk to them, the guards. Really, the point guard situation is a tough situation because you have to run the, run the team. And for Kai, I just want her to know, hey, if we haven't scored three times down the floor, you got to set it up. you you got to run some offense. you got to get to the, the ball to the people that we want to score, and that being Slagus and then obviously Kate Walker and, and uh, you know, Bow, and we want them to get the ball. You can't just play up and down, up and down, and not have scored and continue to do that. you got to get a good possession. So I just talked to about those kind of things we're talking with coach radice here in the halftime show between iona and buck now uh three-point shooting that was your specialty your career 47 percent three-point shooter what is the number one element about being a great perimeter shooter practice you know I, I always say that to people you know people think it's a mystery why oh how come you're so good or how can you shoot the ball so well practice it's repetition it's doing things the right way your form has to be the right way but I shot 500 shots a day made 500 shots a day and that's without shooting free throws so that's why I shot a high percentage I mean I you know when I missed I actually was surprised I missed with which is a good thing so um, but it's repetition how important is it to uh find players identities on the court you know because sometimes girls are still feeling themselves out but how how do you get confidence in these kids well, you know what, I, I, I think, you know, always being positive with them on the court. Like in practice, I always say I was a player, people don't want to make mistakes. They want to do things right and they want to do things well so that they can win. So having a positive attitude and just correcting them in, in um, a tone that they, you know, 
are receptive to, I think really helps them gain confidence in their game and telling them, hey, one mistake doesn't mean, you know, you blew the whole game or the whole situation. You got to go back down and play defense. And I always say, you know, next next play, next play, next play. And I think that helps them. Uh, during the games, what is your role? Well, I, I think, you know, if it's my scout, obviously, it's, uh, you know, who's matching up with who. So each coach on, on the staff, if it's their scout, they do the matchups when people sub in. So that's what we do. And then, obviously, if it's my scout, I'm watching the offense and the defense of, of the opposing team a lot. We're talking with Coach Radiz here. Uh, you know, you speaking of scout, how many games do you need to watch to feel comfortable knowing what's in the uh, opposition's arsenal? I like to watch at least five games um, on our opponents, uh, so that's that's what I watch and and, um, and I feel comfortable because you know tendencies. Obviously, if you don't know tendencies after five games, um, then then it'd be difficult. But five games is usually the most I watch. Um, I may watch the, a sixth one just to watch to see if they do anything different. But five games is usually what I watch. How many plays do you think you can pick out from the from the opposing team? Uh, you can pick out a lot of different right. plays, and that's the thing. But you know what? It, it's about how are these players playing and are they reading defenses? They may have two sets or three sets, but they're reading off those and they're playing off those sets and reading the defense. So that's what we want to alert our players to. Hey, are they right-handed? Are they left-handed? You know, in the post, do they go over their left shoulder? Do they go over their right shoulder? And so we can help our players um, play defense against them. How do you teach all this complex stuff? Do you use flashcards? I mean, what, what, what do you do? Because some of this stuff is, like you mentioned, there's a lot of cuts and zigzags and it's a lot to digest. Well, I think you, you don't. We don't use flashcards or things like that. I mean, you use your basic defensive tendencies. So obviously, jumping to the ball. Are we trailing shooters off screens? Um, if they're not a shooter, we'll go under a screen because they're a driver. So you can go. I call it third man. A lot of people we call it zero for going under the screen. But um, yeah, just from scouting, we we tell them their tendencies, and then you have a set defensive principle that you go by. You know, so. That's pretty much what we do. We just show them formations and sets so they're not caught off guard that a back back screen's coming. And how do you get over the back screen? So they just have to remember tendencies. And always in basketball, you always have to jump to the ball. That's one of the basic tendencies is jump to the ball so you don't get a beat on a cut. Has technology changed this game for the good or for the bad? You know what? I don't know. You know, I, I'm older, and so the younger people on staff uh, laugh at me about technology. Um, I'm willing to learn and, and have and have learned because there's so many different new systems. I think it's good, but I always say you have to put all the information in for with technology for it to spit anything back at you. You know, and and um, I think it helps. But I think it's more helpful, like, on the NBA side and things like that because they want to know what teams run after the first quarter. What do they run, you know, at the beginning of the third quarter? Do they go to pick and roll? For us, it's, it's, it's not that complicated. We make it more complicated, but it's not that complicated. It's, it's basic stuff. I'm with you. Sometimes this generation, like, we're sitting next to each other. They'd rather text each other than talk to each other. The, the, the communication element still has to be there as a coach and to student-athlete relationship, right? Well, absolutely, and, that, and that's what I'm used to. I'm used to the face-to-face face personal relationship with people even when you're recruiting you're on the phone talking to these student athletes on the phone I mean um, and the phone isn't technology I know it is now but you know we all had phones back then in our in our homes <laughs> landlines and that's how you would talk to people but now with technology I think um, too many people are um, just caught up in the technology like you can be on your phone 24 7 with things and I don't think that's a good thing nowadays I don't think it's good for social interaction um, and a lot of different things I mean I think it takes time away from maybe your academic studies because you want to be on the phone do you know texting player you know your teammates and things so I'm not big on technology do I do it do I use it yes because I have to but I'm not a fan I want to ask you about recruiting you've been a great recruiter I mean your track record speaks for yourself at CN Hall Delaware and now at Bucknell uh, how do you how do you look at that it factor at a tenth grader? I mean, how do you know a tenth grader whose body's still developing if they can play at the Division One level? To me, that's just amazing how you you coaches can can see that through people. Yeah, you know what? I mean, obviously you can see the younger players who are really good, and most of the time they're going to a higher level right. if they're really good and they're really skilled. But a lot of the players, you look at athleticism. Do they have the athleticism to play in the college level? And then what, what is their skill set? What can they do for you? Um, and that's what we look at. And then we watch them. I mean, you track them from their freshman year, sophomore year, see how much they've improved. And, um, you know, after doing it for so long, you get used to it. You can really pick out some of those, those young ladies that are going to be good in college. 
You're really into fitness and regimen. How important is nutrition with these student athletes? Well, you know what? It's more important, I think, nowadays with the student athletes that they get rest and that they're eating right because they always say what you put into your body is what you're going to get out fuel-wise and things like that, and I'm a firm believer um, in that. And uh, just being a runner and playing basketball, it's always been an important part of my regimen. So, um, you know, it helps so your body doesn't get broken down. So what kind of foods do you stress to these student athletes? I mean, you know what, fruits and vegetables and, you know, you can have junk, but not anything in excess. You know, the ice cream, the candy, you, you don't do that. You want to hydrate a lot of water, a lot of Gatorade. It's important to hydrate your muscles and things like that. But, you know, chicken, um, some meat, some dairy a little bit, but a lot of fruits and vegetables, eating, eating well that way. And you need some protein, obviously, to rebuild the muscles. And, you know, a couple more here. You know, big picture with this team. Is this a team that's going to be a lot better, you know, mid-February than it is in mid-November? Oh, absolutely. I think because we're trying to fit in younger players that you've seen on the court with the older players. And and that's always a process. You know, everyone's saying, you know, you do have some older players. But, you know, some of these older players that are juniors – didn't all play a lot last year, and now their role also is different. They're playing a, a bigger role this year. So to mesh them with the freshmen takes time. It's a process. You glad to be back in New York to get a good slice? I, I am. Thank God. I know. <laughs> You're absolutely right. No, I, I, I mean, I love New York. Is it a place that I want to live again? Probably. Probably not, um, you know, because I grew up in New York, and um, I like visiting the city, but I don't want to live in a city. So, um, But I love it. It's, it's where I grew up. Janine, thanks so much. Part two of the interview is coming up when Bucknell takes on Fordham in a couple weeks. Uh, Thanks for your time. We're so glad to have you with the Orange and Blue. We look forward to reminiscing from your Fordham days as a Hall of Famer. Well, that'll be fun, and thanks for having me. That was Janine Reese. I'm Justin Answell. Second half coming up next here from the Heinz Center.